So now that we have some understanding of the environment settings, we also understand that currently we don't have any environment settings. So we need to bring in light to reveal our geometry in some way. Well, the way that we do that is through materials. And we're going to start with our IES light, which we looked at before, which is this little sphere up here. Now, the first thing I'll tell you about this little sphere up here is that you need to change the UVs for a sphere like this in SketchUp. Otherwise, you're not going to have good results because SketchUp's native mapping for spheres is pretty weak. So what we need to do is we need to either use the Maxwell UV override and set it for spherical, or if you have UV tools, which is a Ruby plugin that you can get on Sketchucation, you can choose the spherical map, which is what I did. Once you have that, you can assign a material. Okay, well, assigning materials is a two-part process with the SketchUp plugin. So if first we go to Window, Materials, and you'll see that we have all these materials that I've already assigned in our SketchUp model. And each one of these I've named something pertinent. For instance, here's Backdrop, Coffee, Cup Accents, Cups, so on and so forth. This particular material happens to be IES light, which is what is assigned to this particular object. So how do I get an actual Maxwell material onto this? Well, there's a couple of things that we need to know in order to deal with that. The first is that if we go to the Scene Manager and the Material tab, and we click on this item right here, we'll get a drop-down list of all of the different SketchUp materials that we've assigned. And if we choose IES light, you'll see that we currently have a material. And what it is, is it's an automatic character with a roughness of 97. Basically what this is, is this is what happens to all your SketchUp materials when they're defined by SketchUp, is Maxwell more or less just converts them all to a rough, highly diffuse surface and renders them out as such. And unless you change something, that's what you're gonna get on all your materials from SketchUp. Well, there's a couple ways that we can change that. First, we can change things here, which we'll look at later. The second is we can switch over to MXM mode. And if we go to MXM mode, you'll see that we have a much simpler interface. We have three buttons. We have browse, edit, and clear. And we won't be able to access edit and clear until we've browsed for something. So I'm gonna browse for a material here. And I'm gonna go to the training scene folder where I've given you these materials. And this is an Urco IES light that is an MXM that's made from an Urco IES that comes free with Maxwell. And if we open that, you'll see we get a preview of that particular material. And we can edit that by simply clicking the edit button. And what that'll do is it'll launch MXED, which is the Maxwell Material Editor. And this has a lot more power than what you can do in SketchUp. And this is a great way of doing things. And if we hit File, Save, and then close out of this guy, whatever changes we make will be updated here and that will be then automatically applied to this material. But as it stands right now, that's applied to that material, so we don't need to worry about it at all. However, we do have one thing that we need to worry about, and that is we're in scene two. And if you remember what I said about the camera settings not remembering from scene to scene, if you go to shot 2D, and we look at our camera settings, you'll see that our EV is set to six. However, if we go to scene two, you'll see that our EV is set to 14. Well, that's not gonna cut it, so what we need to do is we need to change that to six as well. Those are the kind of things that'll catch you if you're not paying attention. So now that we've got an IES file here, let me just go ahead and zoom up a little. Let's go ahead and do a quick little preview render to see what that IES is gonna look like so that you can get an idea of what to expect from that out of Maxwell. All right, so you can see we have a light, and you can see that all those SketchUp materials have been converted to that diffuse material right now. So we are actually getting something that looks very much like our SketchUp model, except for the lighting, right away. I mean, it looks pretty good. You're also gonna notice that the sphere up here is pure black. There is no light coming from the sphere. And the reason why is because it's not a true emitter. It doesn't actually emit light. What that sphere is, is it's a record of the light fixture as they were measured in a laboratory type setting. 
And so it's going to give you fixture type light effects that you would have to model in SketchUp any other way, which is really not a very convenient thing. So the IS lights can be very handy for you if you're trying to mimic a particular light fixture. And I highly recommend that you use them for that particular effect. Now, they're best when they're off camera so that you don't see a black sphere in the middle of your render for no good reason. But as long as it's off camera, it's all good. I'm going to hit stop. Close that out. So I would use the IS in the scene that we have set up here. And that makes a lot more sense. But what I also want to do is I want to work with some other materials. Well, if we go up here and we go to the mat material that we currently have assigned to our mat down here, I want to apply a fabric to that. If I go to the MXM mode and we load a fabric, I've got one here called Silk Crosses Pattern. Launch that one right there. And you'll see that we have this material and it's already been assigned to this. However, it's not going to look right. And the reason why it's not going to look right is because there's no image here that represents this image here. Well, there's a couple of things that we could do in this particular instance. We don't have the ability to take the texture because the texture is not in a format that SketchUp recognizes. So the way around that is to actually go back to the SketchUp materials and then find the map material, double click it to edit it, and then say use texture image. And you'll see in the folder, the training scene folder, that I've created a smaller version of that crosses pattern ref, which is the actual image that's making up that material. And I've made a small version. Well, how big should a SketchUp file be? Personally, my opinion is you really shouldn't have anything that's higher than 256 by 256 pixels for a SketchUp material. It really doesn't make use of high res textures very well. And in most instances, that's going to be plenty good for what you need. However, you want to make sure that when you're working with your image that you're working from, whether it be a TIFF or JPEG or PNG or whatever, that it's got a different name. You don't want them to have the same names. Otherwise, what will happen is your low res file will replace your high res file on export in certain scenarios, which is not a good thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that. And you can see that this comes in right now at one meter by one meter. And you know, that's okay. That works just fine for me. What may not be obvious though, is that because this was assigned to grouped geometry, what I need to actually do is go in to that group and then select everything and reapply that material. And if I do that, now what you see is what you'll get. Now, if I apply that material to a group, I won't get what I'm looking for. It'll use different set of UVs, which just are not going to work for us. So it's very important to know that even though you can control your UVs, meaning your scale, right here, the problem is, is that if you don't do it within the group, you're going to have problems. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just going to go ahead and say something like 0.5. That instantly scales my UVs. And now I'm going to get this pattern. So let me go ahead and hit render and you'll see what I mean. So there we go. Now we got the appropriately scaled pattern. It looks good. It looks like what we were shooting for. And you can see how great that IES light works as long as it's off panel. So we're good there. We're just going to hit stop. Just wanted to show you how that worked. And now we're going to go ahead and continue on with a few other materials. I want to do something for this tabletop here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into that like so. Got to open the group. It's got a lot of geometry. There we go. And you'll see here that this actually has its own material. This is the material that's called tabletop right there. When we're looking at this particular material, what I want to do is I want to associate this with uh, Maxwell material, just like before we go to MXM. So we'll just choose tabletop, go to MXM, and we're going to load the fans material here. Now, the fans material is a type of anisotropy, which is going to give us this very nice sort of brushed aluminum type look or brushed steel effect. I like it a lot. Now, I could apply this and do the same thing that I just did with the silk crosses, but I'm not going to. And instead, I'm going to show you a different way of handling this particular issue. I'm just going to go ahead and close out my scene manager. And now I'm going to go ahead. Now that we have this geometry selected, I'm going to context click it. And I'm going to say Maxwell UV override 
and we're just going to call this one cubic, which is just fine for this. So now what I've done is I've gone and I've applied a 0.25 meter by 0.25 meter UV projector on this. And this is one way of getting around having to worry about having actual images in your SketchUp files. So let me just go ahead and close out of that and we'll render that real quick and you'll see how that works. So you can see that that has applied that material to our tabletop. It looks great. We've got the appropriately sized UVs. Everything's looking pretty good. So that is more or less how we begin to apply MXM materials within SketchUp. But how do we take advantage of some of the embedded type materials? Well, we'll look at that in the next video.